So dreams, what are they? Messages from an alternate dimension? Unresolved concepts gone all squishy under the brain? Or just detritus, things left over like advertising slogans and movie dialogue? Who knows? You might say who cares, but I'm building a whole show around a dream. So in this dream, which I had last week and was quite quite vivid, as you will hear, and I um, I was walking down an abandoned railway line, and I went through a tunnel, and in that tunnel there was you know graffiti and stuff, but it was like a door. It was like a door in the wall of the tunnel, and some graffiti artist had written "Tunnel of Love" on it. And with dream logic, I pushed the door and it opened. And that took me down a long flight of stairs into a room lit by a golden hue. And in that room was a small man wearing a bowler hat. And that immediately made me think about my Uncle Jack, who, in the 60s, used to work in the city. And um, at the city of London, and he wore what was then the the uniform of the day, which was a a blue pinstripe suit, highly polished brown brogues and uh, an umbrella. He always had an umbrella, even if it wasn't raining. This was topped off by a bowler hat. And when he put the bowler hat on in the morning, he'd wink at me and he'd say, never trust a man in a bowler hat. And in that room, as I say, was a man in a Bola hat. So the fellow in the bowler hat comes up to me and he says, "Uh, have you got a ticket? And I'm like, for what? He said, this is, you know, it's a pop-up event. It's a tunnel of love. You must have a ticket. Well, I fell in my pocket. And strangely enough, I did have a ticket. It said, tunnel of love, admit one. But dream like logic, I went with the thing. You, You don't fight dreams. It's pointless. So I said, well, what's the form then? How's it done, mate? What's What goes on? And uh, he grinned and he said, uh, look over there, you'll see that doorway. And there was a doorway. And he said, look over there, there's another there's a bunch of doorways all leading off this circular chamber. He said, you go up to the doorway and there'll be a visual clue and you'll figure it out. And I went, are you sure about this? And he said, yeah. So I went up to the first door and above it, carved into the stone, was like an old-time pop gun, which was like a little toy gun that had a cork in on, on a string and you fired it and the gun popped out. And next to it was an old-time stapler. 
I was like, oh, got it. Pop staples. So I opened the door, or oh, the door actually opened itself, and in there was Pop Staples and his three lovely daughters. As always, the staple singers just put me in a marvellous mood and I was ready for anything, <laughs> really. And I came out of that room just charged up. Um, I was going to have another word with Bowler Hatman, but he was talking to some Japanese tourists and presumably giving them the same intro that he'd given me. So I wandered around, I looked at the, one of the, the next doors and uh, it was dead simple. It was dead simple, it had a snake on it. The 
snake. Now she wrapped him up all cozy in a coverture of silk. And then laid him by the fireside with some honey and some milk. Now she hurried home from her work that night as soon as she arrived. Now she found that pretty snake she'd taken in had been revived. Take me in, oh tender woman. Take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, tender woman. The snake. Now she clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't have brought you in by now, you might have. Pretty skin again And then kissed and held him tight But instead of saying thanks That snake gave her a vicious bite oh! Take me in, oh tender woman Take me in, for heaven's sake Take me in, tender woman Inside the snake So yeah, this is my kind of dream now. This is Tunnel of Love, Snake. It's all got Freudian and extremely... Uh, can I say the word phallic? I just said it. I just said it. It's it's it's. Uh, I'm having a proper old Tunnel of Love dream. <laughs> and uh, the next the next door phased me very very slightly. There were five crowns on it, and then I'm like, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> this is like. I mean, it's the five royales. I just couldn't wait for your return. For your love, dear, I'm greatly concerned. Cause I didn't want to do nothing wrong I tried to wait, wait Hoping one day it would be I just couldn't wait I'm not that kind I've just gotta tell you How much I want you to be mine Cause I love you so much, can't you see? Tell me you need me, need me Tell me you want it to be I just couldn't wait No matter how I try If you say you don't want me I know I'll just die
like a big finish. Anyway, the <laughs> the Five Royales. Uh, you might not have heard of the Five Royales, I, I, but um, they are one of the 50s unsung heroes. I mean, they just made wonderful tracks. And uh, their sisters, uh, the Royalettes, were also damn good. Here they are. Was too blind to see you letting me go. Now that you've set me free, it's gonna take a miracle. Anyway, the place was starting to fill up by now. There was, um, well, they're busting a lot of pensioners. Um, <laughs> like I should complain. Um, and uh, But they, these were the type of pensioners that you see, you know, that look like they're from Countdown, um, the Countdown audience. Um, I mean, look, I'm not going to lie to you, uh, or even though I usually do. But, I, you know, this uh, in a week I'll be 68, right? So, I mean... <laughs> And but old age pensioners, they just drive me mad. Uh, they wear like um, outdoor gear to, and, and walking sticks just to go to the supermarket. It's a, you know, this, this whole thing of a late, the, it, somehow it's a late life adventure, you know. Um, and in the dream, they were just the same. Uh, there they were, sort of filling the place up, and they stand there, and then, then you know. Stand there's like a big thing, so maybe that's why it was in the dream. Because next thing you know, there's like um, women with uh, prams and they're all chatting to each other, and they're standing there, and you can't get past anybody. So you've got the old AP standing there, and you've got women with it. And then they, they, you know, the Japanese tourists are milling about, their place was getting crowded. So I found a quiet little door that nobody was interested in, and uh, it had a shamrock on it, and uh, I knew it'd be my old pals. The OJs.
was a blast. It was so good to catch up with him again. And um, I hadn't seen him in ages. And I was having a chat with Paddy and Seamus from the OJs. Um, and they were saying that, you know, they thought they should put that out again. And I'm like, guys, you know, you made that record 25, 26 years ago, all about world peace and all the countries. It's not happening, is it? You know, do you think the time's right for a love train? I'm not sure. Anyway, they were finishing their shift. And I could hear this. I said, what's that? He said, oh, Barry White's on next and he's, he's just coming in. I said, well, where is he? And he said, well, you know, he's a big lad. And uh, he sort of approaches. So I thought, well, you don't get many chances to see Barry White nowadays, even though it's a dream, and I knew that. So I went with it. You're the one I need. You're the one. You're the one I need. Yeah, you're the one. You're the one I need. Yeah, you're the one. You're the one I need. So we leave Barry just lodging it in that room probably forever. I mean, what a wonderful talk. Um, a huge man caressing something in a room. Anyway, uh, that's me, that's not you. Um, I 
get out there and uh, it's, uh, suddenly there's nobody there. They've all, all those people that were there have all gone. But the little fella's still there with a bowler hat, right? Yeah, he's still there and he comes up and he's like, Ooh, you know, he might have a bit of trouble with the next one. And I'm like, outside the door there was, there was a, a little stand with a bust on it uh, of someone's head. Um, and there was a photo of a little ant and a packet of mint imperials. Ooh. I, could, I knew I could get it. I knew I could get it. I knew I could get it. And it was in there somewhere. You know how that thing is when it's in the back of your brain? You just keep digging and digging. And it was little Anthony and the imperials going out of my head. Where? Yes, I think I'm going out of my head Over you Over you I want you to want me I need you so badly I can't think of anything but you Walk past me, you don't even know that I exist. Going out of my head, over you. Out of my head, over you. Out of my head, day and night, night and day and night. All right, I must be I think Little Anthony was 10 years old when he sang that. Um, and if not, he certainly sounded like it. Um, but that was exciting. Uh, I hadn't heard that record in ages. It, it sprung loads of odd memories for me. And um, when I came out, Bowler Hatman's, oh, he's, like, he's really given it. Uh, he's got two sleazy uh, young women with him, uh, which not age appropriate, in my opinion. And uh, a, a woman that looked like a demented scarecrow that he introduces as anti fadge. He said, this is my Auntie Fudge. And I said, very pleased to meet you. And she just squealed and sort of ran off. Uh, anyway, dreams, what are you going to do? Um, on the next, the next sort of visual clue was um, a set of ripped up divorce papers, um, which I took to be John Newman. Took you so long, where only fools go. I shook the angel and young. Now I'm rising from the crowd, rising up to you. Feel with all the strength I find, there's nothing I can't do.
version by John that was very exciting and the whole this dream thing was just really building up nicely for me now um, and I was starting to understand the concept of the tunnel of love and the next one there was well it was four beetles on a rooftop I'm going to have to intervene. Dream intervention. I'm sorry. That's not the Beatles at all. That's David Byrne and the Talking Heads. And the visual clue should have been the building in flames. Which is my face. Which is a building. Do you like my little sad voice?
And never forget that dreams not only mess with time, but they also mess with space-time. And that's why everything went completely the wrong way around, where we heard talking heads where we should be hearing them now, and then now we're going to hear the Beatles when we should have been hearing the talking heads. It's dreamlike logic. She does. Ooh, she does. Yes, she does. And if somebody loved me like she does. That's some marvellous Beatles uh, live on the rooftop playing Don't Let Me Down. And boy, that really brought something back to me. I don't know what it was or what it is or where it's going, but something came back. Speaking of which, the next one was like a 1950s style to the lettering and the whole look of it. And you know, it's like there was a heart and a baby and it's... Uh, Love my baby. Yeah, yeah, but that didn't, the door, the door didn't open. Love my baby. And then I just see that down at the bottom of the door is a tiny little blue flame. Yeah. 
Well, you just got to love a man who sells himself by to his would-be lover by saying he can add up two and two to make four. Uh, by this point, the dream's starting to get a bit insubstantial, whittly. Is that a word, whittly? Perhaps, perhaps not, but it seems to fit. The dream got kind of whittly and not fitting quite right, and I was starting to feel a bit uncomfortable. Um, and I looked at the next uh, doorway entrance and it was a bit odd because there was like a Nazi flag um, and then a bottle of perfume. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't figure that out. But underneath it was a tiny ruby, red of course. And then I remembered there's only one song that I know of that was used not only for a, a national, an international perfume commercial, but also as the theme for the 1936 Olympiad. And that record is Our Day Will Come by Ruby and the Romantics. And that's what I thought I was going to hear, but um, when I get in there, it's like I'm caught in some old live TV radio show with an introduction and... Anyway, you were here. You call the act uh, Ruby and the Romantics? Right. And these are the Romantics behind us. Right. <laughs> Is it true, gentlemen? Yeah. <laughs> well, Akron must be very proud of you. They are. And the next song that you're going to sing is your is your very big record hit. How many records has it sold, Ruby, or do you oh, know? I point? really don't know. Over a million, would you say? Well, I really don't know. How many records has Close it sold? To Close to a million. 999,000. <laughs> <laughs> that is called... Our day will come. And it has. Ruby and the Romantics. Falling 
Well, as the music indicates, our time in the dream world is almost over. I've had enough of this constant, upbeat soul music. I wanted to wake up. But I couldn't. to smell clean air and see the sky again but I couldn't because a mist had descended and it wasn't an ordinary mist no, it was one of those funny mists you don't like very much it makes you feel a bit queasy like there's distant things happening that you can't control way over there ominous things rumbling things and then my little pal popped up again bowler hat man I looked at him closely and he did actually look a bit like my Uncle Jack I remembered what my Uncle Jack had said about the bowler hats and that. And uh, I said to him, I said, I'm, I'm fed up with this now, I want out. And he grinned. He said, there's only one way out. Just through the mist, I saw this little, really shabby looking door. It was the only one left. Just me and Bowler Hat Man and a shabby looking door. And above it was a pitchfork. And there was a nasty smell like sulfur. You know, and I, I looked back at Bowler Hat Man. And he lifted the hat to reveal a bald head with a couple of shiny horns. I knew where I was then. You know where I was then. And fortunately, I woke up. And I didn't have to go in there. And I didn't have to listen to the residents um, deconstructing Elvis Presley's Devil in Disguise. But you do. Oh, you are. 
You walk like an angel. Hey, you talk. Oh, you talk just like an angel. I got wise. I had to get wise. Uh, I'm sure the devil in the skies. Yeah, devil. for a worldwide audience.